And the federal government on Friday received samples of Russia's COVID-19 vaccine. Russia's ambassador to Nigeria, Alexei Shabashin, delivered the samples to the Minister of Health, Osage Hanire, during a visit to the ministry in Abuja. Also present at the event were the Minister of State for Health, Oloru Nimbe Mamora, top management of the Health Ministry and other Nigerian scientists. In a statement signed by the Ministry's Director of Information, Media and Public Relations, Olujimi Oyetomi, the Health Minister said on Friday the vaccine will be quickly referred to the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, as well as the Nigerian Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development, amongst other agencies, for review and possible validation. We're now joined this morning by Dr. Tui Mebawondu, a public health practitioner, and Professor Oyewale Tomori, a virologist. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Fantastic. And uh, nice uh, to speak with you again this morning. Uh, I'm going to kick pleasure. off by asking, when we contacted you on this matter, you, you clearly had a different position which you wanted to clarify. Please tell us what you know about this. And did we receive the actual vaccine as it was stated? Yeah, thank you very much. I was actually at the ceremony by Zoom. And there was actually no vaccine delivered to the minister. What the minister got was what you call an aid memoir. We stated clearly what Russia wanted to do. They gave information about what they've done so far with the vaccine. And they're inviting Nigeria to join other 20 countries to begin uh, uh, negotiations on whether we would like to participate in trials or also whether we want to do technology transfer and such other things. As you know, the vaccine process itself has not even gone to the phase three. So you can't release any vaccine at that time. Russia itself said those, that phase three study will not be finished until the end of the year. So you can't be giving what is not ready to anybody. So we didn't receive any vaccine. We got a letter inviting us. It was a salesman's job coming to Nigeria to say, we are going to have this vaccine ready by this time. Please, I mean, you can see from the picture, it's a letter they are giving to the minister. Nobody has brought any vaccine to Nigeria. I think it's the wrong information. And the truth is that it is an invitation to participate in future activities when the vaccine is ready by the end of the year. Okay, thanks very much for clarifying that. I'm moving to Dr. Tui Mbawondu now. Uh, the federal government is opening up places by the day. The curfew, of course, you must have noticed, has also been you know, adjusted. What is your assessment of the COVID-19 situation in Nigeria? Uh, well, uh, the situation is such that um, uh, we, 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 I think we shouldn't write, really hurry up to open up the, uh, the space. One, the reasons are obvious. Um, are we really, really so prepared to confront, say, should we have a second wave? Should we have um, escalation of what we're seeing on the ground now? Are we ready to confront this? Are people really ready, prepared, uh, whether in our schools, whether in our public places to confront and adhere to strict protocols that guide uh, prevention of COVID-19. Let us not deceive ourselves. The, uh, well, do we have really very few drugs or no, actually no, no treatment for COVID-19 as it is now, and the vaccine is not ready. Of course, what Russia did was what, I, what we can call a publicity stunt to just jump in front. If you have a few months to deal with, to do a proper thing, why the hurry, if not for um, public uh, hype. And then the other thing, simple thing is that we know that the public is so, 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 um, they're not really so sure of the vaccines. There are a lot of negative publicity about the vaccine. We have to be very careful in introducing it. But as far as I'm concerned, well, as we are opening up this country, we have to be very careful. This rapid opening, day, we, we should appreciate our situation in terms of human resources for health and our response so far. Now, our testing has not been sufficient. You, you read, we just got about 400,000 tests or so. So that's not, that's not sufficient. What we need to do, for us to open up this place properly, we need to further deepen the testing. If we don't do that and we open up rapidly, we may end up closing again rapidly. Okay, I want you to go on, before I move back to Professor Tomori, I want you to go on and speak on what might be limiting our um, testing. Um, because, of course, if you hear about South Africa, their testing is in millions already. So, so what, you know, might be different with Nigeria? I, I think our problem, first uh, yeah, of all, oh. we, don't have enough, we don't have enough laboratories. 
If you check South Africa, they're talking of hundreds of labs, both private and public. In Nigeria, I think we have less than 70 laboratories functioning. And uh, to, to join what, uh, to support what you is saying, you know, if you look at our numbers, it's not consistent. Today, the number goes up to 150, it goes to 216 tomorrow, it goes up to another number the next day. And when you check how many we're actually testing, those numbers are, are very, very, very small. I mean, we, 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 there was a time we only tested about uh, 2,000 samples, and then it went down to 1,000. So there's no consistency about the numbers of drop on something. So let's not deceive ourselves. We are not getting any consistency in drop. And just like she said, for example, we, we are not abiding by all those rules. And we want to open up the whole place up. No, I mean, and then we think we want to open up our airport also. And you remember that of the 40, 50, almost 50,000 cases we have now, they came out of 800 directly or indirectly from 800, 800 travelers. So when we open up our, our borders with more travelers coming in, we're in for a great disaster. Not only that, but okay. we're not ready. And that's the issue. I think we need to tell our people. All right. You know, right. We're not abiding by the rules. We're not abiding by anything. And these are the issues that we're really being in trouble for. We better get ready for a big thing that is coming up. We don't take time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get back we'll get back to that you know part of the conversation uh, before we wrap this up. You know, I, um, I'm I'm going to stick with uh, Professor Tomori. I need you to speak on on this. The need for a vaccine has become, of course, more urgent globally and nationally. With Nigeria, like you said, you know, recording more than fifty thousand COVID nineteen infections and of course over one thousand associated um, uh, fatalities, according to the NCDC. What interventions do you feel that we must be employing next that we have maybe not even thought about yet? You see, the foundation for the control of this uh, of COVID rests on the people. I keep saying it, COVID is not going to affect the government. COVID is not going to kill my government. It's going to kill me. So I'm the more important person, the more important thing in this COVID control. And until you and I, as individuals, abide by all those rules and regulations, wear your mask where you go out, wash your hand, keep it safe distance. We're not doing all that. We can lock this country down for the next 200 years. If we don't do those things, COVID cases will continue to rise until there's no more person to be infected. So it, it boils down to you and me as individuals. You are the most important person in COVID control. And if you're not doing, playing your role, there's nothing the government does that will make a difference. All right, Dr. Tui, back to you. It, it gets even more confusing. Um, one moment it looks like the numbers are declining. Another moment you hear someone you know or maybe don't even know has yet again died from uh, the uh, um, virus. What do you think that can clearly be done to depict a real picture of what we are dealing with? Hello, I, I can I, I can't really get the question. Because it seems the what I'm asking, what I'm is asking is not doing very well. On your side, um, can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. I'm, I'm asking, what do you think can clearly depict the picture of our COVID nineteen status? Because it, no, sometimes it feels like I can't hear you. I can't. I can't hear your, your can I, question. I, I, I do uh, have well, a question. Maybe I could answer. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I did. Can't get it. Uh, because I can hear Professor Tomori very well now, Prof. Very well. Okay, now. can you hear me now, clearly? Um, you see, what has happened is this. What, what has happened to us is this. From the beginning, we have mismanaged the information system. We've okay. mismanaged it, and then we allow a lot of negative information to come in and dominate the discussion. And in public health, truth is more important. It's so so. It's very important. You can't then come and tell me that you are doing this number of testing, you are flattening the curve, when in reality it's a lie. I mean, honestly, in public health, truth is the first, first, it's even more important than even all the things you are putting into the places. And you know your situation. Right now, we are not communicating directly so deeply with the stakeholders as we should have done, okay? Because the stakeholder is not just government alone. We're having a lot of people down there at the tiny marketplace, at the community square, you know, at even religious centers, where they must have clear cut action that must be taken for the collectives. But again, we've seen the domination of the of, of the discussion of you know of the interaction with fake news, with distortions, with misinformation. People are even now weaponizing the information. We have lost it at that point in time. 
So now, if you ask me in addition to what Prof said, we need to rejig our information system. We need to rejig it. We're not communicating, honestly. We're not communicating. We need to rejig the information system. If we don't do that, we may not get to where we, we, we're deciding to go. Now, we, have, we are creating a false sense of safety that, wait a minute, the, uh, something is going, no more COVID, people are shaking their hand, they're running, they're hugging. Again, that is another tragedy of our information management system as far as this, this pandemic is concerned. We need to rethink that. If you don't rethink that, everything you are putting on it will just go down the drain and you're not going to get the desired result you are, you are, you are taking off. Now, even if you have to bring vaccine, even the, the, the funny Russia vaccine that, that has come now, that they are trying to do the phase three testing, it's just going to last two years. We are not, we are not even too sure how effective vaccine is. Supposing at the end of the day, sir, we don't get vaccine, what do we do? There are so many viral illnesses similar to corona, you know, that vaccines are not even existing. They're not working. So supposing we don't even get vaccine for this, what do we do? So we should have, you know, doubled down on information management, on prevention, on making things easy, on enhancing yeah, that people generally can flow with those information and run with it. But you can imagine what the spiritual, a lot of spiritual houses are saying with their followers, denouncing masks, talking about this, mentioning one uh, 666. It's a, it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge disaster coming. All right. Uh, Professor Tomori, the last time we had you on the show, you asserted that Nigeria um, has got all it takes to find the cure for COVID-19, whether through a vaccine or through herbs. And with, you know, people like you being on the major, one of the major drivers that helped Nigeria win the war against wild polio, Nigeria obviously has got the expertise. But the question remains, what more is holding us down as it stands currently? You remember, you didn't complete my statement. I said Nigeria has got all it takes but you will not take all it has. Oh. And that's our problem. <laughs> we have the people, but because of the silos between the one ministry and the other, between one parastatal and the other, we will not make advantage of what we have. There are people in this country who are ready to assist. Take the issue of data. I mean, I spend daily looking at data from um, uh, NCDC. And I see the, what they do. We suggest to them what and what they should do, but nobody is listening to what we're saying. They, they have their own way. They have problems with the states. The laboratories send results to the states. States wait and dub, dub the data. We have suggested let the, 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 the laboratories send results simultaneously to the state and NCDC. Then nobody can mess up with the, with the data. We've seen this in one of, the, one of the states. I don't want to mention the states. Where the person in charge says the number of cases that he has seen between his lab, he's in charge of the lab, was over 2,000. NCDC is reporting 900. These are the issues we're talking about. Take advantage of all your people. Use all the facilities you have. We we'll get over the, this problem. I, I think it is time for us as the country to be transparent on everything. Like you said, give all the facts. And then it is only then we can know what to do, what next to do. If, take one other question I want to bring up. Every day we say 600 samples, 120, 130. Well, these samples collected the same day. Some of them are collected like four, three, four weeks ago, 10 days ago. So we are running, we are, we are running behind it. So what you are telling me, the one thing that is positive today, we're actually positive two weeks ago. And therefore, so we are running behind your epidemic. These are some of the problems. Disaggregate your information. Get the right information. Let, don't let states take, for example, Kogi has had five cases since <laughs> the epidemic started. How can they have only five? What kind of thing is that? These are the things we're talking about. Cross river, only one or two labs are testing in cross river. And so many other things that are, there's incoherence amongst our state, amongst the federal. PTF says one thing. You remember during the Salah, they came out and confessed that they were not testing during the Salah holidays. These are issues we're talking about. They're giving false impressions to our people and we're, we're making them feel that the situation is improving. It is us being on, not, not being correct, not being transparent with the data that we have that is killing us in this country. Dr. Tui, back to you. As a medical expert, would you buy into the idea of seeking for local and indigenous solutions uh, like Ervo use? Uh, as a school, what we do, I'm, I'm trying to pick the, the broken, um, uh, I think the network, maybe on your side, not really. Uh, but I can't. Now, again, um, now, we are, it's a dead situation because I, I didn't quite get your point, but it's a dead situation because now 
what expect medical um, community to do? Number one, there's a high casualty even among these workers as far as this bus is concerned. And if some state now, any good doctor, I'll strike. Can you be that? That even in the middle of a pandemic, a government allowed the health worker to strike. It, it's so challenging. And what we are doing, we are treating us with kid dogs. We just, they are you know, government that the most important for them is to um, pangada, the talking and this and that. Whereas three issues left to attend them. Now, uh, we just, what we do, the hope is for me or uh, for someone who is like the prof is leading back. It keeps saying the truth as far as this is concerned. You know, if you say the truth in a health system, you will run into a lot of problems. If you say the truth, perhaps those that understand, perhaps something will happen. And tell you what, if this, if this place is moved, if you know, country, let's say the, the, the airport is open, what will happen in Charlotte is that a lot of our people, a lot of people will not be allowed to even go outside the country because it's going to be a challenge. Are you, are you going to go and get quarantine for two weeks? Who's going to pay for quarantine? You know? And then when those people are coming in now, how, do you have the facilities? Right? We're closing isolation center. You can't be closing isolation center. We're saying, go to your house and isolate. Who would do that in Nigeria? I mean, honestly, I, I, I've not this kind of um, flop before. I think we need to get see if we're going to make any full impact as far as just on this bit, even on disease generally in this country. All right. Um, of course, we also will quickly apologize for the uh, poor sound uh, from um, Dr. Tui this morning. You know, we will definitely will be dealing with it and trying to make it better. Um, back to Professor Tomori. According to the health minister, the vaccine would be quickly referred to the um, NAVDAC and, of course, uh, other agencies. Uh, well, I think you, you already spoke about that. You know, there's actually no vaccine. So, um, <laughs> I'm not sure what you know we might be doing next, but I want you to quickly speak on um, the possibility of using herbal um, 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 uh, medicine and, of course, homegrown um, um, efforts to generate a vaccine. Um, how possible is that? How likely is that? Um, what might be holding us back also? Let me quickly talk about herbal preparations. Um, I have nothing against herbal preparations. My generation grew up on herbal preparation because there were no hospitals when it was going on. Some of us died from the herbal preparation. And some survived. But the, the issue is that that's why um, science comes in to check those herbal preparations for the ones that will not be uh, dangerous to the life of people. Yeah, we have a lot of herbal preparation in Nigeria, but we don't have the scientific background to test them to confirm which is good and which is not good. That's number one. I think the other point you raised was that, can we, can we as a Nigerian contribute to the development of vaccine? Yeah. Forget it for now, yeah. maybe in future, if we, if we get our acts right. I saw the present situation in Nigeria, forget about anything, developing any vaccine. We can participate in clinical trials, but to develop vaccines is a dream, and it's a dream that we have not woken up from. So. The, 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 the talents are there, as I keep saying. The environment is not there. I mean, it's like taking a, a, a well-seasoned carpenter to a place, and then you don't give him the hammer, you don't give him nails, you don't give him things. He's as useless as any other person. And that's what is happening to Nigeria. We have not created the environment to make our talents to function properly. And until you do that, a lot of the people who are making noise in the diaspora is because the environment is there for them. A few of our people will leave this country and excel overseas. Not because they're different people, not that the country over there has changed them, but because the environment is there for them to bring out their talents. Nigeria has killed talents in this, in the, in, uh, as a country. We have abandoned science, we have abandoned technology, and we have not put our resources into developing the environment for science, the scientists to function. And that's why where we are. That's why we remain a consuming nation. And for a long time, we remain a consuming nation, taking the crumbs from the feet of other countries because we will not put money into science and technology. And the environment for it is not there. Uh, Dr. Tui, I hope that we can hear you clearly now. Um, sometimes it feels really hard uh, trying to convince the average Nigerian uh, that COVID-19 is real. Um, what would you say to those who still, you know, strongly believe that COVID-19 is a government hoax? It, it, that COVID-19 is a hoax? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, I, I am, honestly, I, I have not, in my little um, uh, existence on this earth, I have not seen this level of disinformation, misinformation, and weaponization of information. Unfortunately, this thing is being led by a country that you will never think will do such thing. I'm talking about the United States of America. The level of misinformation in that place is alarming. Of course, you will see people who come out with all sorts of postulations, how they use chloroquine to treat, how they don't use chloroquine to treat. People now should change the proper scientific process. And that you have seen that. The first casualty in this, in this uh, epidemic is science and its process. You now see people coming out and telling you that this is what happened. And this is what is actually feeding the, the misinformation and the disinformation that is happening. The politics aspect of it, because I've always been saying there are three aspects of COVID-19. The COVID-19 infection itself, the politics of COVID-19, and the fraud or, or scam of COVID-19. Depending on which country you are, you tend to see the admixture of all these things. Because now, if you, if, you, if you look at it and you look at the media, say in, uh, in, in Spain, in Britain, and all those things, you don't see most of those television and uh, funny social media lies that is being peddled in America. And unfortunately, we tend to copy America so much, and the, the, the organized religion is not helping a lot in putting this record straight. They just want to look for uh, a conspiracy somewhere, why somebody wants to take charge of the whole world and all that stuff. It's a, it's a huge, huge, huge problem. And that is what is actually driving. We, we, we seem to have suspended a proper scientific thinking and substituted it for a religious or a conspiracy theory thing. And that's what is driving the, all these lies we are seeing about COVID-19. It's a huge challenge. I have stayed in my own corner at every, 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 every forum I attend to debunk all sorts of lies concerning COVID-19. And what, can, what else can I do? But to keep saying it, I engage people personally. And we rely on press, again, to help us deepen those proper communication as far as COVID-19 is concerned. How can anybody say COVID-19 is hoax? We see, we, this is not the first time we're seeing pandemic or epidemic, any, and even in the whole world. It is not the first time. So how would anybody now imagine that, you know, somebody would now come, shut down the whole economy, you know, push the whole world into, you know, recession, because of what? Because of one fraud, of, of one hoax. Um, it's, a, it's a huge challenge, I can tell you. Right. But we just we have to keep communicating. You have to keep communicating. We hope that very soon uh, people will get to understand the, 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 the true import of okay. this. And then take more, a, a drastic decision, in not just protect their health, health system against COVID-19, but other diseases. All right. No, I mean, the honestly, final... it is right time we communicate and deepen proper communication as far as germs, diseases, are concerned. A final question for uh, Dr. Tui. I, I want to know what your recommendations are moving forward. Um, and you can also quickly speak on um, some of the things that you had mentioned about, you know, insincerity uh, with regards to communication between the Nigerian government, the NCDC, and the masses. Um, how do you think that, what, what do you think, you know, might be responsible for that? Uh, and uh, what are your recommendations moving sorry. forward? Uh, I think it was, it was it's my main network that is just, just right. we are here prof very well you know when I'm speaking yeah, qu um, quick, quickly I, just I, share I, your I, recommendations I, going forward Kimi. prof can, can you uh, help me oh, okay. decipher the question I, I, think I, asking, the question. I think he's asking you what do you what do we need to do with all this misinformation from different levels of government and everybody what do you recommend that we I, should I, do I, I think I have to work issue I should I have a network issue. I have a network issue. I can't okay, pro pro uh, Professor okay. Tomorrow, you can go ahead and address Maybe that. I, okay, I, I, I think for example, there's, there's nothing as good as transparency on every level. People must be honest with the people. Give us the right information. I mean, nobody has any control over COVID or something. We're all learning. So be, 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 be honest enough to say this is the situation. And people will then offer, we can all work together and offer the right advice. No, you're going to turn around and start hiding figures, uh, states doing what they like. Uh, today, the federal government says, coffee you today. The state says, we are opening school tomorrow. Everybody's doing what they like. There's no cohesion in the country. I mean, nobody believes in P Nobody believes the government. 
we don't trust, uh, you know, we don't trust that government. They don't even trust themselves. Absolutely. But these are some of the issues we have. The issue of trust. We must be transparent with each other. Give issue. the right information out and people will be able to give the right advice. Dr. Tui, yeah, there's, there's and, uh, yeah. there's a huge trust issue. There's a huge trust issue, a huge trust issue in everything. Government must act trustworthy. We must act trustworthy. We cannot allow lies to be peddled as far as public health is concerned. Yeah. You can't achieve anything. All I right. mean, it's, it's, it's open. You have to be so open about what you are having, what you are experience. Then people can then come out and fashion solution to those problems. You can't, if you fashion solution to lies, you still be lying. I mean, honestly, you know, right. so obviously we must retrace our step and say the figure as it is and do what we should do if we want to really deal with diseases uh, and Thank you very much. this COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Tui Meba Wondu and uh, Professor Yewale Tomori, thank you so much for this conversation we just had. Looking forward always to speaking with you again. It's my pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you.